they cheapened it down yeah. to whose name is on the trade license. It, they cheapened it down to the legalities of uh, things. Yeah. No, no, you are not the company, you don't own the company, mm. etc. I have contributed, I have made this. And this incident awakened the beast in me to come back and say, oh, hold on a second, I am the company, <laughs> you know? Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the queen of Versace? We know it all. She's bold, she's beautiful, and ever so graceful. On this episode, I'm going to be enjoying Sunday brunch with Netflix Dubai Bling star Zena at Palazzo Versace, Dubai. At Palazzo Versace. Where else? <laughs> <laughs> I want to know why are you called the Queen of Versace? I uh, came to Dubai in 2006. Okay. And they had just started uh, developing Palazzo Versace Dubai. Yeah. And I joined the team that was working on it mm -hmm. sales, marketing, development, etc. And uh, because I've been here for over 15, 16 years, uh, yeah. I became Zena of Versace, the Zena of Versace. <laughs> and then everybody was like, oh, <laughs> you are Versace and I love the brand as well. Right. And uh, it just came to me. And where are you originally from? So I'm originally from uh, Lebanon. Okay. I left Lebanon because of constant political unrest. Okay. Uh, while we have a great educational system, most of the youth would find that there aren't uh, enough opportunities for work. Dubai was the closest uh, Arab speaking country mm. and my brother had come before me. So. It was an easy move for me. What did you think when you were coming to the city? What kind of career would you like to have here? I grew up in a uh, middle income family. Okay. And because of the political situation in my country, mm -hmm. a lot of us found uh, times where our parents didn't have money. Financial security was something that I always aimed for. Mm -hmm. And because of my upbringing, mm -hmm. I promised myself never to need anybody financially. So hence why I worked really hard, hence why it was a very big uh, decision that I t took early on yeah. to make sure that I never need anybody financially. So uh, the best way to do it is to work hard yeah. and then you will find and reap the reward. Yeah, but the city of Dubai truly welcomes everyone, especially those who work really hard. So what's been your Dubai journey and your Dubai story, so to say, from the time that you came here? Dubai. A lot of people say that it is the land of opportunities. Yeah. It truly is the land of opportunities for people that are serious, that are focused, that want to rebel on the reality, that want to change uh, the environment they grew in. Mm -hmm. I had to climb the corporate ladder. I started as a salesperson. I came into an industry that I know nothing about. And uh, I worked really hard for it. So it's how many years? It's been close to 15? 16 years since 16 you've been years. here. Yeah. Now, Vers Palazzo Versace is very much like home to you. You've yeah. been here for many, many years. We are yeah. at this restaurant called Enigma. What's the speciality here? What is it that you would recommend uh, guests who come here should definitely try? So, Enigma is not only my favorite restaurant in Palazzo Versace, it is probably my favorite restaurant ever. Some of my favorite uh, dishes would be uh, the kebab. Okay. You will not taste anything like it in Dubai. Okay. Uh, they have the kebab torch. All right. It's also nice because I like um, food that has a little bit of sweetness. They have great salads as well. And just the presentation and the ambiance in the, in the restaurant wow. is amazing. Now you, you I really make it, it sound so good, Zina. It's so good <laughs> and I'm very hungry. <laughs> I can't wait to try it all. Yeah. So let's begin the Sunday brunch. Everybody loves gold. Yeah, what about you? <laughs> there's gold and there's gold plated. So uh, to get to know uh, what is real gold and what is gold plated, it takes some time. But this looks really interesting, the gold kebab here. Uh, 
How did you get into real estate as a space from modeling? I studied banking and finance. Uh, I wanted to do graphic design and then uh, my father was like, no, you're not doing graphic design. You are uh, going to study banking and finance. You will work in a bank. You will get paid 13 months because mm -hmm. that was how they used to get paid in uh, Lebanon. And you uh, will finish your uh, duty at 3 p.m. And you will be there for your kids to receive them from the bus. And I was like, I, I really respected him. And my dad is someone that did not have the luxury of getting an education, mm -hmm. but he uh, was, God bless his soul, one of the smartest people I know. When he said, no, you're doing banking and finance, I was like, okay. <laughs> what I did after uh, I got my graduation, uh, after I graduated and mm -hmm. I was already in real estate, yeah. I did all of these things. I got a professional makeup certificate. I did professional uh, makeup for big brands. I uh, enrolled in a graphic design uh, course. I did a lot of things. What made you do a show like the Bible? I was interested in media for many years. Growing up, I always used to look for different sources of income mm. so I can support myself. I used to play professional basketball in my country and I used to make money. I used to do uh, modeling, makeup and hair uh, uh, adverts. Uh, I also worked in media. I was a reporter for an uh, entertainment news channel. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I did it for three years. And then uh, it happened where uh, the people from Dubai Bling got in touch and yeah. they wanted to cast me for it. And the moment I heard Netflix, I was like, <laughs> cancel this project. Let's do this. How has life changed since Dubai Bling? So first couple of weeks, I didn't know what to do with myself. <laughs> uh, I had an idea that it will do well. However, I didn't expect that much love from uh, the international community. It took me a few uh, weeks to understand that, Zena, you spoke about your uh, m marital problems. Yeah. And you spoke <laughs> about your daughter. You spoke about uh, your uh, issues with the weight. And uh, I felt for a second that I have lost all privacy. Yeah. <laughs> it was a bit shocking for me. It took me some time. I uh, didn't go out much uh, in public. Mm. Uh, and then I started getting all of this amazing uh, feedback yeah. from people that were touched by the show, that received my messages, yeah. that felt uh, that uh, it's empowering them in a certain uh, decision they are about to take in their life. Yeah. Uh, or uh, it just gave them uh, hope. Of course, I met some of the other cast members also of Dubai Bling who uh, assured to me that this is not a scripted show because for a very long period of time, I thought this was a scripted show. But all the incidents that happened through the show were all real. A lot of people thought it was scripted. A lot. Yeah. But uh, no, I guarantee you it was not uh, scripted. It was all natural. All the reactions were natural. And a lot of the people that know me, mm -hmm. they said, they didn't even ask me if it was scripted because they saw on my face yeah. that I am putting a lot of effort yeah. to stay composed and to act the way I uh, acted. Was there any of the cast members that you knew before the filming happened? So I've known a few of them uh, through social media or through okay. common uh, friends. Right. Uh, not really uh, close. Yeah. Uh, the only close person to me was uh, Safa. Safa. Your friendship with her is really admirable to be honest and she always has your back. For how long have you guys been friends and how did you both meet? I think I've known Safa for like six, seven years, okay. if not more, don't mm -hmm. quote me on it. Yeah. It's not like we celebrate an <laughs> anniversary or anything, but so I knew about her through the real estate uh, market yeah. and her cousin is a very close friend of mine. They said, do you feel there are characters that might uh, suit hmm. the show? And when they said the name is Dubai Bling, I was like, who's the most blingy person I know? <laughs> Safa! <laughs> so she was uh, my go-to person. Safa told me that uh, the day it was launched on Netflix, you guys all got together at her house to watch and binged watch the entire series together. Twice. Twice. <laughs> twice. If she missed that detail, twice. <laughs> Our reaction, uh, because while you're shooting, you don't know what are the other scenes that are happening. Yeah. So uh, you might be saying something good about someone and then you are like, what? He said that about me? Yeah. What? <laughs> so yeah. people that say, no, it's not real. Hmm. No, do people really do that? Yes, darling. You <laughs> gossip with your best friend yeah. about 
your other best friend. Yeah. This <laughs> happens. Happens. Okay. You know, why do we want to take ourselves out and be uh, suddenly yeah. uh, pretend to be uh, uh, perfect? Hmm. We are not perfect. And yeah. if the production team felt that we are all perfectionists, they wouldn't bring this mix of people together. But whoever I don't speak to, yeah. I've already um, moved on. Okay. I have uh, accepted and digested and it's been many uh, months. I do not have time to hold grudges against people. Mm -hmm. I barely have time to love the people that love me, <laughs> let alone to sit and hate on people that hate me. Are you over that incident now? Yes. That happened? You are? Yes, hmm. I am. I'm over it for me. Hmm. I feel it's pushed me to uh, grow a lot as a person. Yeah. Um, you have a lot of people around you mm. that sometimes don't have the guts or courage to tell you what they really think yeah. to your face. When some people tell you something that is not good, it's not always about you. Sometimes it's the projection and their own insecurity. So um, that incident actually pushed me to realize a lot of things uh, internally. Mm -hmm. So when someone questioned, uh, oh, you're not the company, you are not, and I was like, I am the company. It is a sign of self-confidence, of knowing your ability, of believing in your skills, knowing what you put on the table. And yes, it was triggered through uh, a moment of crisis in the show. It is something that I uh, live by and I've lived by for many years. And uh, it's amazing that for the first time I managed to, um, to like, find words for it. I have been in this institution for over 15, 16 years. They never made me feel that, oh no, you have shares, you don't have shares. I am an owner. They, they, they cheapened it down yeah. to whose name is on the trade license, even though my name is on the trade license, but I'm saying <laughs> it, they cheapened it down to the legalities of uh, things. Yeah. No, no, you are not the company, you don't own the company, mm. etc. A lot of employees feel this pride in being part of a company, yeah. understand what they've brought to the table, how they've built this company day after day, year after year, client after client. Right. And for someone to, to, to be able to say, I know and I understand my worth and my uh, contribution to the success of this organization, I am the company. I am. I have contributed. I have made this. This is the result of many years of hard work, sacrifice, struggle, etc. It got to a point where uh, a lot of people are using it as I am confident. I am proud. I am a woman. I am a man. I am a mother. Because mothers also are the company. Being a caregiver at home is not something to be uh, demeaned, no. demeaned at no. all. Uh, so uh, it's a message against anybody that tries to uh, diminish yeah. your contribution, to make you think small, or make you feel small. Feel small. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's yeah. this is my contribution, and while building this uh, brand, yeah. honestly, every time like I wrote the mission, the vision, etc., I would have tears in my eyes, and this incident. Wo uh, awakened the beast in me to come back and say, oh, hold on a second, I am the company, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. and a lot of people related uh, yeah. to it. Yeah, no, such a strong statement, to be honest. And uh, Zina, as I speak to you, I mean, I can feel the vibe. I can feel it and I want to say it too. I you am are. the company. <laughs> such a strong statement. A lot of people also debated that uh, the representation of Dubai wasn't really accurate in the show Dubai Bling. That's not Dubai is. What do you have to say about that? So, first of all, uh, in a country with eight, nine people, yeah. it's very difficult to sample everybody <laughs> in ten characters. True. Right? If you want to take a proper representation of everybody that is in Dubai, mm -hmm. you would need at least 50 people. This show was to showcase a group of people that yeah. only represent themselves. Mm. Each one of them has their own unique story. Yeah. And uh, they put everybody uh, together. Yeah. You're watching one season. You yeah. don't know my whole story. Yeah. I came to Dubai with $300 and I made it to millions. How did she make it to millions? How did she, what did she, how did she eat with $300? The moral of the story is, 
Yeah. I did come to Dubai with $300. I stayed with my brother. Yeah. I started working in a real estate uh, company with this development after I was rejected by another one, which pushed me to actually really be adamant to be in the real estate industry. The market was happening in 2006, 2007. We were selling like hotcakes and uh, it was a commission only uh, job, which means there was no floor, yeah. but there was no ceiling as well. True. And I capitalized on that. It doesn't mean because now I get messages, uh, Zena, I have $400. How can I make it? <laughs> It's also about which car you drive, which bag you're carrying, um, where do you stay, what your address is. Do you think these things are really, really important in Dubai? So and let's be honest about it. What's this. important is your uh, confidence. So okay. when I first started making money, mm -hmm. I had two choices. Either spend them on bags mm -hmm. that are a depreciating asset, but not today. For Safa, <laughs> it's like we have an argument. <laughs> For her, a bag is an appreciating asset. For me, no. So either you uh, put it in uh, luxury items that yeah. are, have a depreciating uh, value, yeah. or you put it in uh, real estate or other investments, etc. I chose to put my money in real estate. Every single dirham I made in Dubai for mm. the first four or five years, I put it back in the market. And there was the financial crisis and I managed to keep my money uh, there. And then I managed to uh, get my original amounts plus, plus a premium. Yeah, so this is how I built myself uh, in Dubai. Also first, first few months hmm. when you are new to money and you want to prove and tell everybody else yeah. that yes, I have made it. Yeah. I did do a stupid decision and buy a brand new BMW uh, convertible and uh, I went uh, into a seven year uh, car loan and uh, that was the last time I ever thought of uh, getting something just to show it to people. I did it, yeah. but I, it didn't give me the satisfaction I thought it would give me. I sold the BMW, I got a Hummer. Okay. I, wanted, <laughs> I wanted to park it anywhere and not yeah. care. I wanted to go off the cliff and <laughs> not worry about the car getting uh, damaged. So yeah. I stopped thinking about the car. I am the company. Yeah. I'm not my car. I'm not my uh, shoes. I'm not my bag. I do love luxury items, not for what their value is, mm -hmm. but because the quality of these luxury items is uh, in them. And yeah. when you wear something that is uh, cheap, yeah. the quality sometimes is cheap, yeah. right? Yeah. But I do like to look for good deals. I do like to uh, uh, buy uh, brands that are not very common uh, for people from these local designers. I go to every country I go to, I buy from these local uh, designers because I feel it's something new and genuine yeah. without having to pay the premium of owning a... Uh, fashion brand that is uh, well known other than Versace with Versace I don't <laughs> I don't ask about about the price <laughs> so for anyone who lives in Dubai and is probably not able to afford uh, you know the luxury handbags or the cars what is the hack that you would suggest is it okay to just be yourself in the city or strive hard to live up to the ma lifestyle of others what is it that you would like to say to any beginner or a new person so first of all hmm. we should not look at the people around us and hmm. compare ourselves to them okay one we don't know their story yeah. we don't know what they have in the bank my priority is to have money in the bank and to have investments so that i can provide for my uh, children and for my retirement True. my priority is not to go and stand outside uh, hermes to get a birkin bag yeah um Invest in your education. Education will give you confidence. Mm -hmm. Education will make you a powerful uh, person without needing the bells and whistles. Mm -hmm. There, you invest in yourself, yeah. in your education, in your skills. You work hard, you make the money, you invest it again. Yeah. And then later on, you start investing in brands and buying things that are nice to have, not must have. Who, according to you, is the biggest bully in the Dubai Bling squad? So bully is a big word and people have been throwing it right, left and center. For me, mm -hmm. as in bullying was practiced on me by Ibrahim. The biggest gossip monger. I think Ibrahim and I have done our share of uh, gossip, <laughs> but the gossip was 
not something that I have not said to the person's face. I did tell Farhana a few things of what I think, and it was coming from a loving place. Yeah. It was not coming from a place where I am criticizing you, I want to destroy you, I want to bully you, I want to make you feel bad about yourself. But yes, because I had a lot of scenes with Safa, yeah. and Safa is a very good friend of mine, probably when we are talking about a third person, we would be seen like we are uh, gossiping. Okay. We wanted to keep it real. I have no problem with sponsorship. Hmm. This is her job. Influencers yeah. need brands, brands need influencers. My point was, mm -hmm. Farhana, I'm coming to your birthday. Hmm. I want to enjoy you in your birthday. I want to celebrate you in your mm. birthday. I don't want to feel that uh, you are busy um, creating, like, content. creating content. That's it. Who's most entertaining? Uh, Safa. <laughs> Safa. Safa. <laughs> my best scenes are with Safa. Yeah, I would agree to that. Her one-liners. Oh my God. Her one-liners, her fashion, her <laughs> buy me a Birkin. I... I'm in love with Safa. She's so unapologetic about no. it. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to play a fun game, which is called Fave or Fake. Okay, Fave is your favorite and Fake is fake. So, Chris. Fave. Danya. Before the incident, as in when nothing had yeah. happened in the uh, incident, I thought she was uh, Fave. But after the incident, I felt, okay, clearly I did not receive the memo yeah, of yeah. Fake. Farhana. Now recently fave. At some point in time fave. Yeah, okay. Safa. No points for guessing. Fave, 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 fave. <laughs> Ultimate fave. DJ Bliss. Fave. Brianna. Fave. LJ. Fave. Lojan Omran. Fave. Okay. Fahad. Love Fahad. He's, he's <laughs> up there with Safa. Sometimes he wins over Safa also. <laughs> Abraham. He did deliver drama to yes. the show. But uh, he took it to a level that it shouldn't have, yeah. so fake. Continuing our game, would you rather be rich or popular? Rich. Be polite or be honest? Honest. Successful entrepreneur or a hands-on mom? Successful entrepreneur. Invisible or be able to read others' minds? Read others' minds. Be invited for a red carpet event or a pajama party? Pajama party any day of the week. Stay at the best luxurious hotel for life or be able to travel anywhere? Be able to travel anywhere. Gossip or have heart-to-heart -heart conversation? Heart-to-heart -heart every single time. Talking of Dubai, mm. and you've been here for so long, I'm sure you would know which are the best spots to go. What are your favorite hangout points in Dubai? You should check out uh, Nikki Beach. Oh yeah, it's a nice place. I've been yes. there. <laughs> it's a very nice place. Mm. Uh, the food is great and uh, the beach there is one of the best beach spots in Dubai. Uh, I love the IFC. They have okay. great options mm -hmm. for uh, culinary experiences. I really like it. And uh, if you are uh, up for a show, mm -hmm. uh, theater mm -hmm. is a very good place. We were also talking about how difficult is it for a mom like you to manage everything, to imagine, to pursue your passion, to uh, to manage your kid. I mean, most women who are most working moms are sailing in the same boat. What do you have to say to them? One, children want a happy mother. Mm -hmm. If the happiness of the mother comes from her pursuing her dreams, then being in the workforce is the right thing to do. Uh, you don't want to wake up 10, 15 years later after they've graduated and moved to I don't know where mm -hmm. to live their life. You'll be like, oh, but I did nothing with my uh, life. Yeah. Uh, some women, this is their, uh, th this is what they want to do. This is how they uh, enjoy or uh, th this is how they uh, fulfill their uh, desire. For me, I always felt I want to do more. I want to give back to my society. I want to be a great example for my uh, kids. Yeah. And not only that, financial stability, because at some points in time, I did not have it growing up. I wanted to make sure that they have it. Wow, Dina, it's been wonderful talking to you. Oh. You don't want dessert? <laughs> no, no. <laughs>